My name is John Billingsley, a.k.a. Dr. Phil Flox from Enterprise. I am with these fabulous people, all from the Star Trek community. We have one thing in common. Our lives have been touched by the dreaded disease, pancreatic cancer. We'd like to introduce ourselves, tell you a little bit about what brings us together, and a wonderful organization called PanCam that we would like you to support. And now I'm going to turn it over to the sexiest person here, Ace Swain. Yes. Oh, I am a 20-year survivor of pancreatic cancer. That's why we're all here. Yeah. Hope. Thanks. And that's unusual, and I'm really lucky. The guy who got me through it, my husband, Armin Shimmerman. Thank you, Kitty. You're welcome, honey. I'm here to honor Kitty's struggle, the struggle of all my friends around the table, the struggle of many of you out there. Let's stop it in its tracks now. Well done. My name's Jonathan Frakes. My brother, Daniel Frakes, died at 41. What we're trying to do with PanCan.org is raise money to improve awareness and increase research money. So please help us pancan.org backslash team trek. I'd also like to introduce the newest member of our trek team, Juan Carlos Cotto. Yay. Thanks, Jonathan. My brother Manny Cotto passed away from pancreatic cancer. Manny was the executive producer of Star Trek Enterprise during season four, and he believed very much in the principles of Star Trek, a bright future in which man coexists with civilizations from all over the universe and pushes forward. Manny's belief in Star Trek, I think, is what we're trying to do with pancreatic cancer. The future is often not bright for people with the disease, but we're here to change that. My mother passed away at the age of 70, from diagnosis to death, two months. Because of PanCan, people are living longer with this disease than ever before. People are surviving. Hey everyone, welcome to the Delta Flyers. And before we start this episode, I just want to say we have an incredible group of fellow actors from this franchise we've all worked on. We love them to death. We do. But yeah. they they want to send you to a website for pancreatic cancer, but they give the wrong uh, website address constantly. Now, Kitty Swink, who is one of our guests, yeah. clearly is the smartest of the gang because she gave the correct web address for yeah. where you need to go for pancreatic cancer to support team Trek. She yeah. gave the correct address. So, so Robbie, what is the correct address to go to please? The correct address to donate for team Trek and pancreatic cancer research is purplestride.org backslash team Trek. Don't listen to those other boys. Only listen to Kitty Swank and us right now. And we'll remind you as we go along. We have will. Fun. All right, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of the Delta Flyers. And this week we have, look at this illustrious panel we have. <laughs> We're all here to talk about the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And let's talk about all of our distinguished panel, panelies, John Billingsley, <laughs> Armin Shimmerman, Kitty Swink, Jonathan Frakes, Juan Carlos Cotto, Robbie McNeil and myself hosting, of course. So welcome. What welcome, doesn't everyone? Everybody. Yeah, welcome, welcome, guys. Why doesn't everyone just Thanks, talk Robert. about their involvement in this one by one, their story? Um, shall we start with uh, John and then we'll yeah. move around clockwise? Go ahead. Sure. I, I I would ultimately defer to Kitty and Armin because they're the ones who brought all of us together. Yes. But we all have had our lives touched by pancreatic cancer. My mother passed away in 1990 from um, diagnosis to death, two months. Wow. He was complaining wow. of stomach issues, back problems. It never entered our mind. It never entered any of the doctor's minds that it could mm -hmm. possibly be pancreatic cancer. They didn't do the necessary tests. But by the time it was discovered, it was too late. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that Kitty and Armin's story so interested me is because they've had such great success at actually increasing the survivability rate. And because of the work they do and because of the awareness that has been spread through uh, our work with PanCan, people are living longer and recognizing early detection matters. So that's my yeah. that's what brings me to the table with these wonderful people. Thank you. Jonathan Frakes. Hi, my wonderful brother, Daniel, who was actually the cute one, he died at, at 41. He turned yellow. <clears throat> we took him to the hospital. They opened him up, and they looked, and they closed him up, and they said, he's got six months to live. Now, he had a young brand new daughter and a wife and he was uh uh he was the best man at my wedding to give you some idea of what our relationship was like hmm. so and at this point there were 
there was a 4% survival rate. Kitty, who is our vision of hope, knew the story of my brother and asked me to join the uh, the team, if you will, Team Trek. And she has survived for 20 years after having been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So Kitty's hope, Kitty's vision of hope, Kitty's presence, Kitty's spirit is why I've joined and why we all continue. So um, in Daniel's memory, I have joined and I've never been more involved in a charity that I've uh, participated in. And obviously, every time I think about Daniel, I smile and I cry. And it's a uh, kind of a wonderful combination of uh, emotion. And I get to share time with all of these wonderful people. We have a new team member, Juan Carlos Cotto. Yes. Thank you. John. Thank you. Let's go, um, Juan Carlos. I'm, I'm here because of my brother, Manny, who a lot of Trek fans will know ran Star Trek Enterprise in season four he's he was a writer producer director he passed away three months ago july 9th this year uh diagnosed 13 months prior uh his his pancreatic cancer presented as diabetes which is important sort of for early detection a lot of times because the pancreas controls insulin and other enzymes and stuff it presented as that first and that's how they found it um but manny you know believed in Star Trek and Manny, you know, introduced me to Star Trek and I'm a writer, producer, director because of him, basically, you know, I, I was a PA on his super eights as a kid and hmm. he just introduced me to the show and, and everything. And, and in, in dealing with his passing recently, I found out about Pan Can and about the Star Trek connection. And I just had to be a part of it to help in any way I could. Awesome. Let's bring it to Armin and Kitty now. I'll let Kitty go first. Uh, hi, everybody. I, in 2000, end of 2003, beginning of 2004, I kept losing weight. I had lower back pain. We didn't know what was going on. I just thought I was under a lot of pressure. Our friend Cecily Adams, who a lot of Star Trek fans know as Moogie, was dying of lung cancer, and I was worrying about her, and my father had Alzheimer's, and I was worried about him. And so I just assumed I was going through a lot of stress. And in... Um, the end of February of 2004, I, uh, I was sitting in Cecily's uh, hospital room and her childhood nanny said to me, don't worry about her, worry about yourself. And I came home and said that to Armin. And he said, why don't you listen to her? And I called my doctor and she had a, a, a freak opening the next day. Somebody canceled right as I was calling. And I went in they said, well, you probably have acid reflux, but let's do some tests. Over the weekend, my urine turned brown on Monday, we were at a funeral for a friend's son, who was 25 years old. And when I came home, there was a message from my doctor saying, go to the hospital right now, your kidneys and your liver are shutting down. And 17 days later, I came out of Cedar sinai missing half my stomach, half my pancreas, two feet of my intestines, my gallbladder and 28 lymph nodes. And I am the luckiest woman alive, I had a 4% chance of making it five years. And here I am, it'll be 20 years on the 3rd of March, since my surgery, and I'm still here. So I think it's my job to help other people still be here and for their families to have hope. So that's why I'm here. And then when Charlotte Ray, who was like my spiritual grandmother was diagnosed, she introduced me to Pan Can and we would go to Orange County and speak at events for them. And then Pan Can asked me a few years ago to join the team and Armin came on and I called, uh, I saw actually um, Jonathan at a party at Marina Sirtis' house and said, will you join? And then we asked John and now we have Juan Carlos. So it's, it's really a team that's growing and we're so proud of it. We're so happy. And the reason why I'm really alive aside from great doctors is him. Oh. Him, 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 him. Um, thank you. I'm not quite <laughs> sure that's true. You had support from a wonderful medical team and, and from great friends who all bucked you up when you were at your lowest. But um, why am I here? I'm here to honor all the people who have suffered with this disease, whether it's the patients or the families. Uh, I'm here to honor those who have survived, like Kitty. And there's quite a few others as well. And I'm here uh, also to um, make sure that less and less people have to suffer through this. But what we've heard from everybody here on the panel is that this disease shows up at, 
at the last moment. And by the time the doctors uh, have finally diagnosed it, it is usually a little late. Um, there are procedures, uh, um, as Jonathan said, about opening people up. It's called a Whipple. Uh, and that's how Kitty lost all of her organs. Um, but <laughs> uh, it saved her life. But it saved her life. And, and, and that's what PanCan is trying to do, is not only to help patients and their families, which is enormously important, and they do a lot of that, but also they're here to, to instruct doctors to look for these signs. To, because, as I said, usually when the, when the uh, symptoms present themselves, it's a little late. Look for them early. Try to, you know, uh, be, let it be part of your physical examination. We, we need to do this. This is the way that we can increase the survivability rate. As Jonathan and Kitty both said, there was a 4% survival rate uh, when they were um, inflicted by this disease. Now it's 12%. That's a huge, uh, huge increase in survivability. It's still low. 12% is nothing to brag about, but it is quadruple. Have I got the numbers right? Uh, it's triple the survivability uh, rate. Who's the math guy? So much for the Ferengi. Uh, um, and, uh, uh, it, it's really important that people do as I am doing, honoring those around us and helping, yeah. helping. Uh, we are helping by not only contributing, but also by getting the word out. We don't want people to, to get this disease, and the only way to avoid it, the only way to fight it is to get early diagnosis. It's but, aware, a really awareness is the word, right? I mean, so I think tomorrow it starts, right? Uh, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month is November 1st. And it's just oh. about, yeah, it's just about being aware. It sounds like a silly word, but it's true. Doctors being aware, families being aware, you know, you, diabetes was not a, you know, the doctor, his doctor was aware and said, you know, it could be more. So I think it's sort of about, you know, just putting it out there and having it out there in the conversation, you know? Yeah. It's also time to find some markers. That seems to be the uh, what the money that we're putting towards research or the Pantan is putting towards research is uh, in addition to funding doctors' interest in their continuing research. They need to find markers that are specific and easy to detect so that when you go to your physical, your annual physical, which we all hope everyone does, mm -hmm. there's some tests that will, in fact, right. let them know when you need like to tell your PSA. doctor. And there cancer. isn't, exactly. there isn't a, there's not a test right now for this that could be done like that. That's incredible. Well, only yeah. after you present, after you present, then of yeah. course you could. But, but as Jonathan said, we need markers to, to, before you present, before you yeah. show symptoms, before you turn yeah. the And just, a, <clears> there just are two more markers you can, you can, they can look for, but they don't generally look for them because it's a difficult process and not usually helpful. But there are things that you should know if you get uh, diabetes out of the clear blue sky, as happened to Manny, yep. if it runs in your family, um, Ashkenazi Jews are more likely to have it. Um, in the United States, sadly, the black population is is badly underdiagnosed. There's things that you can do. And if it runs in your family, get genetic testing. If you have health insurance, they will pay for genetic testing if it runs in your family. Hmm. And, and if your doctor is ignorant of this, and there are lots of doctors that are ignorant, please call PanCan. PanCan yeah. will direct you towards medical facilities and doctors that can better diagnose this, can better help you. If you want a second opinion, they're a great place to go to get that second opinion from somebody who is knowledgeable in this particular cancer. There's also, a, I, I'm sorry, one more thing about yes. PanCan. There's an incredible support network inside, including Kitty, among others, for families who are in the midst of uh, yeah. going through this. And mm -hmm. that that's a, as impressive as as the research and the doctors, because the, yeah. the people who run this organization really give a shit and they are really, really helpful. No, I mean, this disease doesn't just take lives. It kind of it shatters lives. I mean, Manny yeah. left behind his wife and four kids, you know, little Manny's 14 and he's got a 12 year old uh, daughter and twin nine year old daughters. Wow. And, you know, they lost their dad very young and, and it's, you know, Pancan's there for, for, for them and for everyone, you know, and to, and to piggyback on what Juan Carlos just said, if your family has an instance of pancreatic cancer, uh, please, please, the rest of the family need to go in and get checked uh, because it can be genetic. 
Um, and so I recommend to anyone who's been touched by this disease, go to your doctor, say my, my brother, my mother, my uncle, uh, my sister, my brother, um, if they have suffered, have yourself checked because that's, that's early detection. Right. Two things that I'd like to bring up. One, I'd love to hear you guys talk a bit, uh, Kitty and Armin, about the organization itself, Pancreatic uh, Cancer Action Network, and how you heard about them and the work they do, how long they've been around, how they came to start. But I also wanted to bring up the topic of what we actually do together, which is <laughs> raise money to help this ah, ah <laughs> nice. segue. Yes, yes, you yes. broke you broached the subject. I, I have been fundraising <laughs> for the Hollywood Food Coalition for the last seven years, and I've learned something very valuable. Don't bury the lead. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we you guys, have, sorry, before yeah. you guys jump into that, my quick question is: so it's not necessarily genetic, correct? No, it's yeah. it not can. Kitty had no be, yeah. when no one in her family had pancreatic cancer that we know of. That we not they may not have checked. People may have died, yeah. but uh, but we don't know of anybody in the Swink family that had pancreatic. I do think there's some genetic, not uh, not that they know because they they don't have all the markers yet. But about ten percent of the people who are diagnosed have a genetic connection. However, my grandmother, who had my father's mother, who had breast cancer and was diabetic, and I had breast cancer in my thirties and ended up with pancreatic cancer. So even though there's not a um, connection, a connection, a genetic connection that they know of now, I suspect at some point. Yeah, my, my grandmother had breast cancer and my father had stomach cancer. So it's in my family for sure. So yeah, if it's anywhere in your family, it's advisable for sure. Yeah, okay. and breast cancer, uh, ovarian cancer are both related to pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. um, in a sort of a more, to my less than scientific brain, I'm an actor after all, mm. uh, I, I, I uh, understand that there's a sort of an amorphous connection between those. If you have the BRCA mutation, which I do not have, uh, which is usually what tells people that you have a, a genetic marker for breast cancer, it can also be a marker for pancreatic cancer. Okay. Now can you answer John's question about your association <laughs> and how you first found out about Pancreatic Cancer Action Network? What year did that let start? Me, let, me <laughs> finish my, let me finish my Sorry. thought. Finish your thought. Go, go ahead, John. Go, John. Two, two thoughts. One, go. kick that over. But we are together because we form a team that raises money for an event that is mm -hmm. held in the spring called Purple Stride. Oh. So although this is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, there is actually an event that people can participate in by either walking or sponsoring we who walk or perhaps bringing folks into the fold by becoming champions or striding yeah, yeah. Striding, walking oh, I don't and where I does don't this stride. i where... walk i actually stroll purple stroll it's on the 27th of april 27th of april on the pier right on the santa monica pier yeah. and, and it's, it's in 60 60 cities, 60 cities around yeah. the country is it oh, purplestride.com is, is it how do you how do you find out about this org. Purple org. Purple stride org. Org. Yeah. team track so we, oh, you guys got, have we, your own little yeah, track. Yeah. Yeah. We're a team. We're a team. We're I know. Team. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and we have a big goal this year. Our goal this year is to raise one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So, nice. and should we? What do you think, guys? Should we announce our first? Big? Well, you've already opened Pandora's box. Go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah. Go ahead, Kitty. Okay. And and I have to really credit the lovely and talented John Billingsley, the Roddenberry Foundation has very graciously given us $30,000 towards our $125,000. Wow. wow. So I want to really thank Rod and Heidi and the whole foundation. It's extraordinary what they've done. Rod's and we have a couple guy. of other big foundation gifts coming our way. Mm. So and feel free to match it. <laughs> I know you're going to do that, Frank. Yeah, the Robbie McNeil Foundation. I think they do amazing work. <laughs> they do amazing work. You're not yeah, going to run one of these small Rob. contributions that put us over, and yeah. and this work is very important. We we have to educate people. We have to we have to raise that mortality rate from twelve percent to a hundred percent. And I'd like to see it done in my lifetime, and I don't have much time left. Oh. So, so oh, let's, let's get on. that. Come on. Let's get those donations in. Again, go to pancan.org and, and to contribute to our team, it's backslash uh, 
Team Trek. Team Trek. Yes. Hold on. No, that is wrong. It's purplestride.org backslash Team Trek. And you can you can start your own sub team and be part of our teammates. And yeah. you can walk with us. We had a bunch of people walk with us last year. It was fabulous. Oh, that sounds awesome. And you I got a cool also, purple t-shirt. I have to also thank all my friends and family who donated in Manny's name. Which oh, I, yeah. you know, I raised 15K. I didn't, but my friends and family raised 15K after wow. he passed the Star Trek community. I mean, it was such an outpouring, um, you know, from the community. It's, it was tremendous. And that's really one of the big reasons I'm here as well. Because again, I discovered the connection just in the, in the throes and the insanity of the disease. And you know how it's all a blur, right? When you lose someone like that. And in going online and, and announcing he had passed and all I found out about the Action Network. And um, and it's been incredible. And I think all those connections just help, you know, and there's a whole for me, there's a whole thing about Star Trek and hope and the future that I think is is important here, you know, that we also shouldn't lose sight of. It's um, I mean, it's in part why we're here. Right. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that, one one, you know, one thing that I think of as you're as you're sharing this um, and and just listening to all of your stories, my mother died of breast cancer at 39 years old because of late detection. And I remember I, I can relate to that feeling when you lose somebody suddenly and with a late diagnosis and, and, you know, breast cancer is much more easy to detect than pancreatic cancer with a 12% survival rate is just, it's horrible. It's, it's shocking to me. I, I didn't know, I don't know a lot about this disease. I, but I know the experience of losing someone and feeling alone and feeling isolated and the chaos, the, the, the domino effect that it has on families, like you're talking about yep. and having a group like you guys to connect people and support the families and the, and the patients. And it feels like so much a part of what Star Trek has meant to me in my life. The fact that we're all sitting here after we've been on these shows 20, 30 years ago, and we're still sitting here, we're still connected. And we're yes. still supporting each other. I love what you're doing. I just want to honor that and and say that uh, this is really important. Staying connected, staying involved. The the Star Trek fans have been incredible for decades yeah. in yeah. in helping things like this. And I I really love what you're doing. And I think this, uh, like Juan Carlos, like you said, Star Trek is about connect connecting and humanity and hope and supporting each other and and just a positive outlook and i think that what you're doing is incredible and it's it, kind it's, of also, it's also in, in in wanting to talk about the the pancreatic cancer action network the vehicle through which you know fundraising occurs is always so critical i mean there are a bajillion not-for-profits in the world and mm. Somebody who's been involved in working with a not-for-profit for a number of years, I think it's always really important that people understand when they're donating money, if they're going to donate money, the 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 mechanism by which that money goes to help people is is critical. And I I in my short association have really come to have a, an enormous respect and affection for this particular organization, how they function, the great scope of actions they take. And I, I, that's why I kind of want to make sure that that they get their due and are, are explained. Uh, mm -hmm. and you're best equipped to do that, I think, if you don't mind. Yes, the, the Pam, who started this organization several years ago, many years ago, uh, lost someone and, and she her had mother. her mother and she had no one to go to. It's the very thing that Robbie's talking about. Um, she had no one to go to, and she realized that there needed to be some place for people to go. And uh, she has done an extraordinary job of building this organization into a, a national organization. That's why there are walks, there are Purple Stride walks in 60 cities. Wow. There probably will be more in the years to come. I know a couple of years ago, I walked in Kansas City, and there were thousands of people in Kansas City who were walking with me. I, I, I have to say what she did the first year is she thought, well, there's a lot of people here in Hollywood and she got a bunch of people to come to a fancy dinner that were um, famous and they got the ball rolling. And then the organization just grew and grew and grew and grew till it became the premier funder of research and the place that people can go to get information and help patient and family services off the charts. 
I send people at least once a week, I get a phone call saying, I know somebody who has pancreatic cancer, will you talk to them? And the first thing I do is I say, call PanCan. Mm. Call PanCan. And just, j- just yeah. because I have it at hand and I, I, I'm going to garble it if I don't read it. Since 2003, awarded 236 grants, 217 scientists at 78 institutions working in partnership have invested 208 million to date. Wow. And I, we're, none of us are scientists. So to talk about, you know, nano bubble technology is actually beyond my capacity. But, you know, in any particular kind of cancer research, it is about how you funnel money into the folks who are actually trying to figure out how to cure. And, right. and I think they are playing, in addition to raising patient awareness, doctor awareness, in addition to finding ways to spread the word through some really creative fundraising mechanisms, they're getting the money to the scientists. And I think that's... They, they also did this thing that I find so extraordinary that I have to share it with you. For a long time, if you were in a trial and you are you were not getting good results, you had to stay in that trial or just drop out, but you couldn't move to a different trial. Hmm. And they went and they uh, got a bunch of other organizations to come with them and they went to the FDA and said, stop this. If somebody is not succeeding in a trial, allow them to move to a new drug trial. And they got the rule changed. That's so awesome. people are surviving on that idea alone. It's, it's an off the charts, it seems like such a simple thing to do, but that's the kind of strategic thinking that the people at pan can succeed at and i'm so proud to work with them yeah and we all we all have this sort of like uh you know lobbyists but you know they're lobbyists and then they're lobbyists they've lobbied uh, our government and through the nih have raised from 17 million to 203 million mm. over the arc of the years wow. they've had they've, wow. they've been and if i may i just want to reiterate something that is sort of getting passed over and it isn't but i i want to reiterate it which is this it's not just about the patients and the doctors. It's about the families that surround them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Manny was told about uh, PanCan. It, PanCan has a tremendous support system for the families because yeah. as, a, as a caregiver, which I was when Kitty was diagnosed, uh, the caregiver is at odds about what to do, uh, how to help, who to reach out to, you know, what are the newest technologies. Um, PanCan has that information. We'll help you. We'll we'll take you under their wing and say, okay, this is what you can do in order so that you, as a caregiver, can can better succeed as well. Because as Juan Carlos was saying, um, we don't know what to do when that diagnosis comes for our loved one. We don't know. We're suddenly all we've ever heard of pancreatic cancer is of, of its mortality rate and how many people it's taking. There are survivors, and there are people you can go to, and PanCan will direct you and the family to those people. And uh, so they're a great support system. Well, it sounds so amazing, uh, PanCan and and this this advocacy and research group. It sounds like all of you have had direct experience with this disease, and you've found them to be really effective. And that's not always true of every like like Billingsley was it, saying, they didn't not, they yeah. didn't exist when my my mother was diagnosed and yeah I, it's, we had no clue at all it mm-hmm. sounds incredibly effective in, in in multiple ways the lobbying the research the the family support but as as you say um Armin you you mentioned it, it takes a lot of people it takes a lot of money mm-hmm. and every little dollar adds up and what's amazing about the Trek community is there are millions of fans around the world that are Star Trek fans to have you guys doing this work and getting the, the, the information out to them. If just a little bit from all these people adds yeah. up, even though Armin's not a good mathematician, <laughs> um, it, on that, screen, on I screen, I'm telling you, it, okay, screen it will add up to a lot of money. Armin. Yeah. I, I'm not good at math either, but I know you can get a lot of money. If a lot of people donate just a little bit. Yeah. And it's, not, bit. It, it's not just us. I mean, yeah, unfortunately there are a lot of celebrities who have, I mean, Patrick Swayze comes to mind, a dear, sweet Patrick Swayze. Lisa, his wife, has an entire other team. Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a whole following. There are, I mean, you don't want to name drop right, victims yeah. of pancreatic cancer. Richard but Richard Roundtree but, last week. Yeah. So oh. who was that? Sorry, Kitty. I missed Richard it. Roundtree. Roundtree died last oh, week. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. We, um, and, go ahead. I'm sorry, Johnny. No, no. I just wanted to throw that in that, that, that it's not just the Trek families that have. Right. There's uh, multiple teams going on. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. Armin, we need that. 
Armin and, and Jonathan and I on the Star Trek cruise last year did a yeah. breakfast. Now they they only sold sixty seats. They sold out. They sold them out in two minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I swear to God, they sold them out in two minutes. And it was because so many people on that boat had been touched by this disease. Mm, wow. I'd yeah. say 40 of the 60 people who came to have breakfast with us had either had the disease, had lost a family member to the disease or a friend to the disease. It was, uh, it was hopeful and uh, exciting. And, you know, it's the best of what Star Trek is. They yeah. love science. They love the future. They love helping people. It's, it was, uh, I was, Moved to tears several times during that breakfast, and mm -hmm. we laughed a lot. And, and if I may just take this moment to all the people that have helped in the past, all the people that have contributed, all the people that have walked, all the people that have taken advantage of what PanCan has to offer, I, from my, the bottom of my heart, say thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Same. So this, this is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Right. in November. November. Yep. So yep. what can people do this month? What is special about this month that we can support and get involved? Is there anything? And increase awareness. And increase awareness. What can we do? What can the Star Trek community do? Well, I, I personally think one of the things that I would like to do is to say this is sort of the beginning of our campaign and it culminates with the walk in April. So okay. you should visit our site. And if you're interested in becoming part of this, you'll be engaging in a conversation with us to a certain extent over the course of the next four months. Now, that might not be attractive to you, but kind of grin and bear it. Just <laughs> <laughs> culminating in this opportunity to hopefully stride along with us or in a community close to you. And, and I personally would like to announce the person who donates the most money, Jonathan will give them a piggyback ride. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, that's I heard it. To do. Not a long piggyback ride, a no, short no. piggyback ride. And there would probably be some kind of weight limit. So I'm out. But uh, <laughs> we will we will be looking for some inducements. I, this is something that's sort of near and dear to me. I, I think it's true. As you said, Robbie, one of the things that I think is really wonderful about this community is the nature of the contact we have as artists with our fans. And I, I think down the years, all of us have gotten to know and become quite close to a number of people who approached us initially as fans of our work. I, I'd really like to hope that what we're trying to figure out is ways that we can have a closer relationship with some of the people who want to support our efforts um, so that we can work together and cooperatively. So this is a vehicle and a means by which to do it. And we'll be uh, rolling out some suggestions that we make it more involved over the course of the next month or so. So this is kind of a kickoff to that effort for me. Gotcha. Pancan.org okay. backslash. Team Trek. Team Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong again. It's purplestride.org backslash Team Trek. Having said that, Pancan itself does have other things that they are doing this month specifically oriented towards raising awareness this month. I don't know, Armin and Kitty, if you want to touch on some of those, but... Uh, I'm not as familiar with that as I should be, perhaps Kitty is, but I do want to say if anyone has anybody in their circle of friends, in their family, the one thing we can do with this podcast, learn from this, tell those friends, those family members, go to the PanCan website, pancan.org, and get help because, because it's very helpful and it's very needful. This November, we're, we're really focusing at PanCan on early detection, and PanCan.org can help you. Uh, did you suddenly become diabetic? Um, did you, do, ha, ha, are you having trouble, are you losing weight inexplicably? Are you having trouble holding on to food? Do you have uh, grease, sorry, this is gross, but greasy diarrhea? Mm. That's also a sign. Those are all signs. And and I, I just want to do a shout out about what PanCan has done in, in these terms, two of the women who were really close to me when I was sick, who came over and helped me walk the dogs when I couldn't hold on to dogs and hung out with me and made me laugh and whatever it was and helped Armin. One of them uh, has finished treatment and she just, she was diagnosed about a year ago and she's finished treatment and she's doing really well. She, her surgery was successful and she's gonna fly out here and walk with us. And my wow. friend, That's the great. mother of my two godchildren, her brother had a prophylactic with because they saw what 
he got such early detection that they saw what was going to turn into pancreatic cancer and they did a Whipple procedure on him and he walked with us last year and is going to walk with us this year again. It, it makes a difference to get found, to get your cancer found early. It, it makes an extraordinary difference. This yeah. disease is not a death sentence. There are, if, if you are proactive and you get early detection, it is not a death sentence. Kitty is the proof of that, and so are the other people she just mentioned. And I'm sorry about our next door neighbor's gardener. They came early. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all that right. leaf yeah. blower is a death sentence. Okay, yes. so <laughs> it is indeed. Well, let me, Kitty. When you say greasy diarrhea, you're, are you talking about there's a film of oil on the on the top of the toilet water? Is that there's what you mean? Oil. There's a film of oil, and you you know the, it's lighter in color. Okay. Look at it. Okay. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. Like, I mean, I one of the reasons why I lost. We were doing Hamlet uh, at the time I was beginning to get sick, and I just had diarrhea all the time, and I just thought it was stress because right. I didn't know any better. Right. And it was greasy, and it was pale, and it was it was disgusting. What Got can it. I tell you? Well, well that's Manny's what's amazing. By the, way, by the way, Manny's diabetes started as thirst. He was incredibly thirsty. That was the very very first symptom. Um, huh. which is uh, which is uh, kind of a non sequitur but he could not quench his thirst and wow. uh, no matter how much water he drank and that's mm. one of the first things and his wife said you know my dad has diabetes that's a symptom of diabetes and that's how it started he went in and that's what and then they found the diabetes and then well it's moment. interesting that like you know um we've been living through this pandemic covid right and so right. many things like what we've experienced in in my house is after covid a lot of people just dismiss uh, symptoms as, oh, well, it's it's long COVID. It's, you know, right. and they don't look into things. And what I love about what you're describing, PanCan offers people is very specific things to keep an eye out for that often some of these symptoms, I think a lot of people go into their doctor these days. That's what I've experienced. And and they just say, oh, well, you just had COVID. It's probably that. And, and they don't look any further. So having specific information from PanCan to look into this is great. And uh, again, if you don't like your do your doctor's diagnosis, if you think they're 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 getting rid of you for the next patient, uh, call up PanCan, ask for one of their doctors. Yeah, yeah. there's bound to be one near you. You just have yeah. to give PanCan a call. A, a friend yeah. of a friend of ours has a friend who was recently diagnosed, and they were not getting good help. So we got them to PanCan, and PanCan sent them to a good doctor. That's amazing. Yeah. By the and way, don't, Kitty, don't wait to... in, don't wait until your skin is getting yellow as my yeah. brother did. Yeah. 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 Or I, I got down, I think I weighed 115 when they found it. I was 5'10 at the time. That's pretty skinny. I went down to 90, but so 115 seems robust. Wow. But uh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Took 90, me a long time to 90 pounds at 5'10, Kitty. My I'll goodness. show you a picture sometimes, Garrett. It oh. looks like something out of World War II. Yeah, yeah. I, just... I was straight up and down from every angle. I had yeah. no. I was curved. You were I, skin I mean, and bones. Know. You were yeah. skin yeah. and bones. Is what you yeah. were. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, Kitty, you mentioned Charlotte Ray as your spiritual mother. Is I think what you said. She played my literal mother in Into the Woods in the first national tour. So uh, I love Charlotte. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and and it's so, just another example of these connections that we all know people. We we're right. affected by this, yeah. and uh, directly or you know a couple degrees separate of separation. But yeah, but this is something that needs a team, and you guys are an awesome team. And, and Charlotte Ray is sort of the godmother for this whole for our operation because she was the one that introduced Kitty to PanCan, and of course everybody falls into line after that. Mm -hmm. But Char was was an incredible spokesman for this organization. Mm -hmm. She's, I, I just have to quote: We were in Orange County talking before the Purple Stride in Orange County one year, and I I would carry a um, apple box in the back of my car because she was so short. So. She, in order to see the, or, you know, and and uh, by then she was down to about 410. And at the very end of her speech, she, at, at 90, she went, I just want to say I'm so f mad to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought the house down. She was, she was amazing. Aww, she's amazing. She had a sister, a father, an uncle, and, a, and finally, another sister after she died, who all had pancreatic cancer. Wow, oh my gosh. Aww. There's wow. the pop. Bella. There's the new pop. Bella? Is hey. that the name? 
We think Bella's going to be the name. She okay. came out as. Oh, so she's so Bella. cute. Oh my God. Look at that. Wow. Oh, she's Bellissima. Bellissima. Oh. I can't wait to come give a scoochie kiss to that dog. <laughs> a scoochie kiss? What's a scoochie kiss? Scoochie, scoochie. Oh, okay. <laughs> is there anything else we haven't touched on that is important? Did we mention pancan.org <laughs> backslash <laughs> track? <laughs> Once again, it's wrong. Purplestride.org backslash Team Trek is the right one. Maybe feel free, a good place feel to, show free to join us. The, the video that we're going to send you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you. Uh, this has really touched my heart. And I love seeing uh, people come together like this to do good in the world and help people. And uh, cancer is a horrible disease. and It's touched me and I know it's touched all of you. So uh having community and connection like this means a lot we appreciate the forum thank you so yeah, much thank you yeah. so much for having us thank you uh, so much yeah we, when, you when we first heard about this uh, we were like yeah we have to do this we have to increase awareness so we're so yeah. happy and glad to have all all of you here so thank you to john armin kitty jonathan and juan carlos for being here today and everyone um wait please, one more uh, time yes. jonathan jonathan what was that website again pancan.org backslash Team Trek. Team Trek. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure we had the website <laughs> yeah. correct. I told you they did it a lot. It's purplestride.org backslash Team Trek. Good, 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 good. And I want to do one final welcome to JC. He's such a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you for letting me honor my brother. Thank you. So it's since he's the new, since uh, Juan yeah. Carlos is the newest member, are there any initiation things that he has to go through? Any any paddling? <laughs> the piggyback, like I think. Oh, the, the piggyback. The piggyback. piggyback. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and he has yeah. to come over to my house and eat my baking. That's part of the deal. Oh, okay. it's very right. good. Yeah, baked That's goods the Kobayashi are Maru. That's a Kobayashi Maru of the it, whole thing. Yeah. It is. Oh, <laughs> Kenny makes Kenny makes extraordinary biscuits. So you know we, they're we really good. Oh my gosh, they have more we, and we bread. Insist, and bread. We, we insist on meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of the Delta Flyers. It was very informative, very important, and we hope that all of you are able to go to the website and get involved. And thank you to all of our wonderful guests. We'll see you next week. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, the correct web address is purplestride, P-U-R-P-L-E-S-T-R-I-D-E dot org backslash Team Trek. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.